Hiya, um, I'm Mrs Rycroft, I'm from Upton Court Grammar School and today I'm going to talk to you about how to approach the study of new pro poetry in preparation for an exam. So this is not um, thinking about how to approach poetry in an exam, this is a discussion on the way that you should approach poetry in preparation for an exam so an anthology that has been provided for you beforehand that you are expected to prepare okay so for the edexcel certificate in english language and english literature particularly english language these ones the assessment objectives are as follows i'll take a pause and have a read and see what you think so if you have a look, you can see that it says you need to read with insight and engagement and make appropriate references to the text. That means use quotations, guys. Don't refer to them as quotes, please, because quote is um, the verb, quotation is the noun. So use them the right way around. Developing and sustaining interpretation is what we're going to talk about today. So how to go about doing that. It's extremely important that you understand the steps that you need to go through to do that because when you look at an unseen piece of poetry you will know then what to do and how to apply it. The next thing you need to consider is how you would understand and make evaluations of how the writers use linguistic and structural devices to achieve effect. That's the bit that's implied in the question but not actively stated. So when you're looking at the question, just imagine that that particular statement is there. How, do a write, how does a writer achieve a sense of fear using linguistic and structural devices to achieve their effect or whatever it happens to be? Okay, step one really, or pre-step one, is all the preparatory work that you need to do. So find out who the poet is should be easy because it should be printed on the poem if it's a non you're in a bit of bother and you'll have to look up the poet poem itself rather than the poet but look up the poet understand who they are where they came from what era they were writing in and what particularly concerned them um, some poets will be concerned with uh, political issues some poets might be concerned with morals and ethics Others might write aesthetic poetry that is simply about the beauty of the world around them or a poem of love. Shakespeare's sonnets are often poems of love, so maybe it might be that. What you need to do is to make sure you thoroughly understand the background context to both the poet and the poem. If necessary, do a little bit of reading, which helps you to understand the historical context of that particular time. For example, if you're reading any war poetry, you need to understand a little bit about the issues that were of particular concern to the war poets. So if you have poetry from the Spanish Civil War or poetry from World War One or poetry from World War Two, you need to understand why those poets felt the need to write. So what specifically was it that either happened to them or they read about in the papers or was happening around them that made them feel they needed to respond to that influence in poetry? Okay, so back to the poem itself. First thing you've got to do is read it all the way through and um, note down your initial gut reaction. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What particularly jumped off the page and caught your attention? Are there any words that particularly caught your attention because of their unusual use? Think about whether um, you were engaged by the shape of the poem, physical shape of the poem. Were there capitalised words? Were there lines that were only one or two words long? All that kind of stuff needs to be considered. So. When you're writing um, your initial reaction, make sure that you note all those things down. Next thing you need to do is to hit the dictionary and check out any words that you don't understand. Don't presume or guess, okay? It takes 30 seconds to look a word up in a dictionary, and even less if you've got a computer open in front of you. So don't leave yourself wondering or leave yourself potentially looking silly. Take the time to look it up the first time. Make sure you understand it, get it in your head and get it right for the next time you have to write about the poem. Um, equally the same with similes. If you're not entirely sure why the comparison that's been used is effective, make sure you look it up and you, you understand exactly why it's right. If you didn't know that the sun was a great big ball of light in the sky, if someone said his smile is as bright as the sun, 
you could make a guess but you wouldn't know for sure until you looked it up so don't leave yourself in doubt just check it out okay the next thing you need to do is think about any specific structure that exists in the poem so as you can see there there are lots of things to annotate and identify and the phrase if there is one pops up quite a lot sometimes it's just as important to note what isn't there as it is to note what is there so if there isn't a regular structure or rhyme scheme if there isn't a regular stanza if there isn't a metrical pattern maybe you should consider why think about whether the poem conforms to a specific named type like a sonnet or a VNL like do not go gentle into that good night is a VNL which is a completely but very specific different form of poem to sonnet 116 which obviously is a sonnet excuse me hiccup um, finally you should consider the effect all of those choices have on the meaning of the poem to you as a reader okay you the individual whoever you happen to be uh, sitting listening to this each one of you is going to have a different opinion and a different reaction and it's going to be shaped by the kind of person you are and the kind of things you're interested in and the kind of general knowledge that you have but what it will do is have an effect on you so you need to measure how that's happened consider what's been going on and then jot it down next step devices okay so you have to look for all of those devices in the poem and make sure that you make a good note of them a nice highlighter pen and a bit of colorful annotation never goes amiss when this happens personally when I'm annotating a poem for devices what I do is I think about it in kind of fields of imagery so I think about sound imagery I think about visual imagery sight imagery maybe if you like um, I might even think about smells or sensations or types of color so if it's full of imagery that relates to um, dark tones if it's full of imagery that relates to light citrusy sunlighty type tones um, I would make a note of that equally I would think about whether there's any extended metaphor in the poem so look and see if this imagery follows a pattern if it all links together by theme all those kind of things need to be considered I'd also check out any unusual word choices I'd ask myself why did the poet choose to use that word and not something a bit more mundane or ordinary or expected then again I think about the effect on me and I would consider how I'd responded to all of these things that the poet had done and I think about other people how they might respond so you know I'm adult female I might think about how a teenager would respond to a poem to get a different perspective or I may consider how my own grandmother who's in her 80s might respond to a poem to get a different perspective I might think of someone from a different culture to myself and consider how they would respond and again that would give me another perspective all of this taken into consideration and linked together can give you a nice broad understanding of what a poem could potentially mean the last thing to do very simple and you have probably already got the idea by now is you go back and you read the whole poem again and you look at your initial gut response and you think to yourself have my opinions changed and why have my opinions changed if they have done or why haven't they if they didn't doing this is the beginning of sustaining and developing a response as my helpful red letters on the page tell you and sustaining and developing a response is all part of the higher end of the mark scheme of pretty much any exam board you care to mention but certainly the higher end of the mark scheme when it comes to the edXL certificate what you need to do is you need to show that you can build upon and evaluate a response and that each of your points neatly links to and engages with and builds upon the one before it so you need to be able to develop and sustain a response but you also need to be able to back that up with technical detail and quotations which prove that you are right remember you can say whatever you like as long as you can prove that you're correct and that's it my lovelies um, it's really straightforward it doesn't take that long once you've got used to the process and actually by following these steps carefully you'll end up with your own very personalized opinion 
for any poem that you need to prepare for an exam or a controlled assessment if you're a pupil from another school or a whole bunch of other things you can do with this. In actual fact you could probably apply this um, strategy to most bits of reading that you need to do even outside of the subject of English so hopefully this little organisational chat will give you a helping hand along with lots of other things. Right so be good, um, work hard and come and see me if you need to ask any questions. Bye!